Hey everyone, welcome to group break number 156. Today we have a nice little like 2020-2021 hobby hockey mixer. We got some uh, MVP OPG to start us off uh, with some Series 1 Extended and Series 2 and then kind of some hobby stuff in there like some more hit based products with Artifacts, SP Game Use, uh, Trilogy and SPX to finish it off. So uh, fun little mix today. Uh, don't sleep on MVP and OPG. They're always uh, fun to open and they do provide decent amount of value especially in a break like this because their price point is lower so you can get some nice stuff out of there uh the one thing that i should mention about mvp but just before the break starts uh is that the uh there are rookie redemptions in both mvp and opg and mvp they are division based so it'll be random off between the teams in those divisions uh so it is yeah it's like pacific nor or pacific uh atlantic central and metropolitan and then OPG, I don't think they've announced the um, I don't think they've announced the 3D rookie redemption or 3D rookies yet, but I believe those will be ran off if we pull one of those. They're I don't think they're posted and I don't think they are live yet either. Um Oh, no, there are some that are apparent. Oh, no, that's, uh, there are some that are alive, but the checklist isn't public yet. So, um, yeah, unfortunately, I, uh, yeah, they don't have the, uh, they don't actually have the, uh, the checklist live for those yet. So, uh, it'll be random off. Anyway, sorry about the break, uh, in the pause there but i just want to make sure i had that right for the break artifacts obviously goes to the team on the checklist so anyways uh without further ado let's actually get into the team names and randoms here so three times on the names three times on the teams who you line up with is who you get once twice and third time peter on top Gabriel on the bottom. Team two times. Once, twice, and third time. Ottawa on top, San Jose on the bottom. All right, here we go. Good luck, everyone. Peter, you've got the Senators. Eric, you've got Chicago. Uh, Ted, you've got the Devils. Sammy with the Avs. Mark, you've got the Habs. Ted with the Canucks. Peter with the Penguins. Jeff with the Jets. Harp with the Bruins. Emil with the Ducks. Bill with the Red Wings. Ted with the Yotes and Flames. Brody with the Flyers. Mike with the uh, Michael, sorry, with the Hurricanes. Uh, Jeff, you've got the Kings. Holly with the Knights. Uh, Ted with the Panthers. Peter with the Leafs. Kevin with the Blue Jackets. Ted with the Sabers. Gordon, you got the Stars. Timothy with the Capitals. Ted with the Lightning. Kevin, you've got the Islanders and Oilers. Ted with the Rangers. Emil with the Predators. Eric, you got the Wild. Holly with the Blues. And Gabriel, you've got the Sharks. There are your teams. Uh, I forgot to uh, update the title here quickly. So yeah, uh, I, yeah, I might just ping upper deck on getting the checklist out there for those because they're not public yet, and people have the card like people have the cards in hand type of thing, which is frustrating. So. There's team view. So yeah. Leave it open for some trades here. Again, if you do make a trade, we will have to um, 
Do that, but. Uh, doesn't look like any action on the trade, so let's get, uh, let's get in the break here. So we'll start off with MVP. Here we go. Good luck. Let's have some fun. Let's see some cool stuff. MVP is good for two numbered cards. Card stock, again, I will rant about this forever, is if they made this in this card stock, it'd be like 10 times better of a product. So, yeah, it's first product of the year, so you always get the holdover rookie uh, sheet with it. This year's holdover crop was not that great, but. Other years can be solid. You can also get autographs on the rare occasion. We got one, and I think you normally only get one per case, and we had about a case of this to open, and we're kind of at the end, so. Um, probably won't see another one, but here we go. Matthew's short print for the Leafs and all of these stuff but like the cards are just if you ever felt the base cards of MVP or like even any of the inserts you'll know what I'm talking about by the finish compared to like series one series two it feels so much more premium Kout for the abs on the rookie and Ovechkin's uh scripts checklist silver scripts But it's, it's a really fun intro product. It's a, like, there's some cool cards that you can get over here, some tough cards that you can get. It's a good set building product. Um, I know this upcoming year they have a game in it, so that's really cool. Puzzle back of Sutter for the uh, Canucks. Again, these are, like, these cards will go to, obviously, the player on the front, but you can complete them for a puzzle on the back here. So some cool collectability to it. Net Crashers of Juren for the Habs. A little bit of everything. Again, normally two numbered cards per boxes. The colors and contours, super nice. Some base short prints. First look at some big rookies. Eichel for the Sabres on the base short print. Just fun set to collect. Card quality, again, just tier one in my opinion out of like all the thing card um, products that Upper Deck produces. Brian Russ for the Penguins and uh, third star of McDavid for the Oilers. Nice one there. The retro McDavid insert there. I think they might be adding a couple vet autos next year too. But still, like, again, just it's going to be a fun product to break. Uh, course cop for the Leafs. And third star of Duchesne for the Avs. Uh, Gallagher for the Habs, but we've pulled, I think we pulled a Crosby to 25 out of this. We pulled uh, Seth Jones to five, uh, some other cool stuff along the way too. Ooh, we got, we got a rare colors and contours. Yeah, to 20, Roman Yossi for the Predators. So like, again, this is a lower end product, but you know, you pull this card out of like OPG Platinum or you know, series one, series two, and you're pretty happy with the card to 20. These are normally to 250, but like really nice looking card. So there we go. Somehow that activated Siri and Sagan for the stars on the puzzle back. We 
Yeah, just love this set. The set is honestly very underrated and very good. Norris for the centers. Mirror, mirror of Kuchero for the lightning. Just everything about it. Card quality, uh, the quantity per box, the hits for the price point. Just really good bang for your buck product type of thing. Flurry for Vegas. And again, fun to collect, especially, you know, if you have younger kids um, or, you know, uh, no, like, no people who are wanting to intro into collecting and just want to collect, like, sets or something like that. The silver scripts are always fun. They're not real autographs, but it's just a cool set. Their cards look cool. Uh, Ryan O'Reilly for the blues and Parisi for the wild on the puzzle back. But yeah, just... I'll always say that MVP is, like, the quality of product that series one and series two should have in terms of like card quality um, and just like overall product feel. Lindstrom for the Red Wings. It's just, it's a different, it's on a different game. It's on a different level. Like we haven't had a sticky pack yet like because the card finish is just nicer. Uh, Marchand for the Bruins. Obviously, it probably costs a little bit more, but it's like, it's just like a glossier finish. But they just, they slide nice. Uh, mirror, mirror variation of Barkov for the Panthers and Brian Little for the Jets on the Silver Scripts. So this is a variation because it's got a, you can actually tell on the back too, they got the different uh, logos, but uh, it is not the same one, same photo. So out of 20 card, variation, good box. Norris is one of the better rookies that you can get. Robertson's the other really good one that you're looking for. So really fun product though. McDavid on the short print checklist, base on the rest. Here's our other colors and contours. Uh, Morgan Riley for the Leafs, 250, and Bishop Silver Strips for the Stars. So, like, we hit a Riley to 250, and a Yossi to 20. Out of a, you know, hobby box that a lot of people would be like, eh, like, what's in it type of thing. And, like, those cards, whenever those cards, you pull them out of, like, Series 2, or even, I think they might be an extended, I'm not sure, but definitely in Series 2, people are, are always like, Oh, those are so cool, and you get two of them per box MVP normally. Corpus Allo for the Blue Jackets. I don't know. It's just one of those products that's like got a lot of like really fun collectability stuff to it, and it's just like the price point and name kind of like steer people away from it almost. So it's kind of funny. Malkin for the Penguins and Kreider for the Rangers on the high speed. But again, super fun set. Love it. I will always uh, recommend it because it is just, it's fun. Rask for the Bruins on the puzzle back. Yeah, it's a fun set. And you get some weird f photos in there. Like there's a Taylor Hall for the Yotes and you know, cause it's kind of like, it's after this, it comes out kind of after the playoffs around August time normally. So it'll be it's later this upcoming year, actually, but uh, typically it's that August timeline. Patrick came for Chicago and three stars of Jamie Ben for the stars. So, yeah, solid box, uh, variation, and uh, out of 20 and another 250. Again, if that's series one, you're happy. Like, you know, chalking some young guns in there and you're through the roof. Now it's time for the most painful product to open up. <laughs> With the uh, plastic packs. These things are like grocery bags, essentially. They actually bug my teeth to open up. Oh, I need the... Uh, I need the base image variation checklist up for this. Hang on one second. Most of them are easy enough to pick out. 
but uh, there are a lot of base variations. Oh, also, if we could get any of the first overall draft pick stuff, it goes to the Rangers because, I mean, that was who the first overall draft pick was. So only ones that are tough are the Handshake, which are the Legends, um, and then the Warm-Up and Rookie Year variations, but they'll be in the middle of the pack, so... Uh, retro of Getzlaff for the Ducks, Grice for the Islanders on the red, and Forsberg for the Avalanche. Base on the rest. That pack opened up nicely, but yeah, like these packs are kind of like plastic. Gavrikov for the Blue Jackets, Vlasic on the blue for the uh, Sharks. Gaudreau, number 19 of 100 for Calgary on the retro black. And you normally get uh, two numbered cards in OPG. Typically, so this is 19 of 100. So it's a big set. Same thing as a, like, I think it's, yeah, 600 cards. Plus you'll have the updates in series, uh, series two. So ends up being like six, 50-ish. But yeah, these packs are not the best to open up. I will say that. Uh, Flames retro checklist for the Flames. Uh, gets left for the Ducks on the season highlights. Base on the rest. Uh, actually, is that Hannafin a... Uh 348. No, that is not a warm up variation. Okay, cool. But yeah, product chock full of Easter eggs. They have 3D rookies in them, which I absolutely love. Uh, Quinn Hughes for the Canucks on the tall boy. Barzell on the retro for the Islanders, and Carlson for Chicago on the rookie. I don't think that's rookie year. Yeah, no, that's not rookie year, right? He doesn't have a rookie year variation. I don't think so. All right. Nielsen for the uh, Senators and Retro of Smith for the Predators. But lots of goodies that you can find in this. You can find Retro Blank Backs, um, which are not numbered but really tough to get. You can find uh, Red Border Blank Backs, which are one of ones. So extremely hard to get, but... Uh, retro of I of Hallow for the Kings. Four of Diamonds of Barkov for the Panthers. And Retro Checklist, or actually regular checklist, of the Ducks for Anaheim. And the team checklists fall in the short print base, so they get shipped. In case you're wondering why. Well, I don't know why I'm stacking all these here. They just go here. There we go. Retro of Braden Point for the Lightning. Johansson for the Sabres. Uh, that is not a rookie year variation of Hedman. I don't even think he's on it. Yeah, Sam. Like, that, again, it's it's one of those things. Um, like, I know, I know they're lower end, but you have to, you have to have lower end sets, too. Like, you can't have everything be absolute massive hits. Ajo for the Hurricanes, Ellis for the Predators, Malkin for the Penguins on the blue. Because um, you need ways for people that, you know, don't have... They can't go out and can't spend, you know, the full price on a box of, um, you know, even artifacts this year, or premier, or stuff like that. But you could find... 
Like, you could find MVP, you could find OPG on shelf still. And it, it's a fun, like, it's fun. It's, again, it's more affordable, which is, again, you need those types of products. Especially long term, right? So, uh, Sakic for the apps on the Legends and Checklist for the Sharks. Like, I know, I know it's like, yeah, it's lower end and the cards aren't worth a lot, but that's also just attitude shifting too, right? So, and you can get some really like rare cards that are tough to pull. Like, you know, if we pull the first overall draft pick, like Redemption in MVP, for example, like that's a big card, but they're just fun. I love them. Demko for the Canucks on the retro. Valari for the Kings. You know, there's so many Easter eggs. Like, every pack kind of feels a little bit different. And really collectible. It's fun to trade with. Like, you think of why the Tim sets are so popular. It's because they're affordable and uh, collectible, right? So, I wish, you know, more people kind of saw that type of thing. Uh... Focus for the Devils and Retro to 100 of Giovanni Smith for the Red Wings. Beauvillier on the Retro for the Islanders and Panarin on the Ten of Hearts for the Rangers. But like, again, in both uh, in both MVP and OPG, you get two cards that are numbered. Typically, you get two that are 100 or less in uh, OPG. Sometimes you get three. And MVP, you get you know, normally two 250 or less. Like, you have some rare chase cards in there too. And they're they're fun. Like they're fun. Well, okay, these packs aren't fun to open up, but the once you get inside the pack, it's fun. Uh rookie of Norris for the centers on the tall boy. Those are tougher to hit. Sod for Chicago on the retro, Pasternak for the Bruins on the League Leaders. And you know, like that's at the end of the day, that's what it like can make a good product sometimes, is that it's just fun and it adds value. like i get i get they're not gonna be for everyone i totally get that but like they do have a very important place in the hobby lowry for the jets ovechkin for the capitals like there are some people that would like to see them get rid of them uh okay synergy first year of synergy hated it second year was better so second year was 1819 i think set 1819 was good 1920 like not like re relatively speaking it was better i like the design of it um uh, and like the thought of it the value per box was rough like it is rough on synergy um but that's because a lot of people didn't like it the first year and that kind of rubbed people the wrong way johansson on the retro for the predators hack and paw for the ducks um and then 1920 was awful like it is kind of back to 1718 for me it was just it they're trying to do a product that's like super high-end techie like low cards per pack but then they put in like plain paper inserts into it that look like you could pull them out of opg so like that's where i got frustrated with the product uh hathaway for the capitals and chicago on the blue team checklist so like that's where i get frustrated with it this year it was fine it was better um part of that was also because of you know there wasn't a lot of hockey card products so people liked it more but like the actual clear cards, like the base and stuff, I love that. The cast for greatness, the way they push that with like the metal cards, that's great. I think we got a blank back here. I think we got a blank back coming up here. Like I like that they pushed it. Uh nice. Hack and paw blank back rookie for the ducks. That's a super tough hit. Uh Mark, you had I think I wanna say like the Habs? I think, yeah, you had the Habs. But, like, again, these are super tough to hit. They're one of my favorite, like, blank backs are always a card that I will try to get for rookies that I like. But yeah, Synergy, not my favorite product. Uh, Hellbuck for the Jets on the retro, and Yotes on the checklist. I think that they could, uh, they could do a lot of things to improve on it. You know, and just make it a consistent direction. Uh, like, if you're going to go full tech, go full tech with it. 
if you're gonna go you know more paper stuff go more paper stuff with it but like you can't mix and match kind of because it just makes the feeling of the product really weird monahan for the flames on the tall boys backland for the uh, flames on the retro uh, dry settle on the king of spades for the oilers and wall for the hat or sorry for the habs not the habs so overall like there's some good with the product but it's one of those products that I feel like they could kind of take a page out of like Chronicles and kind of put the good from that product in Chronicles, like in a Panini Chronicles. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that, um, but, you know, do that. Nelson for the uh, Islanders on the blue, Vlasic on the retro, and that is not a rookie year variation there, even though that card just seems different. But, yeah, like, again, we are... In the low end products for this break, we've hit two cards out of 100, one out of 20, one out of 250. We hit a really rare, like, blank back of a rookie. I mean, if this is a bigger rookie, right, in a holdover crop, that's a that's a really big hit. Um, you can sleep on the low end products, but you can't sleep too much on them because there's, there's a lot of value in them. Because everyone, like, there's collectability to it and i think that's why I, I like what upper deck's kind of doing with mvp and opg um to the same extent there's a weird pack in here oh this pack is just like sealed weird box is empty hey snuggy by the way snuggy do you want your name snuggy in all the breaks or your actual name but yeah this break is full all right, extended time. Uh, checklist. So that'll be random between the Panthers and Kings unless someone has them both. Uh, Panthers, Kings is Jeff, so Panthers is someone else. Uh, why can't I find them? Ted. Oh, I, I love Panini stuff. Like, absolutely loved it. There is some stuff that I didn't like, like, as always, but... To me, the cream of the crop product for hockey, like the best design wise and like content wise is 2010-11 Panini Dominion. That is the go-to. Um, I think you have San Jose, but yeah. Kachuk for the Senators. I just, I, I don't know. They're just, their card design, their, yeah. Their contents I just found slightly better. I believe this is a base pack. Yeah, base pack. Uh, for the most part, their QA was better. Uh, the one thing, like, the one thing I will say about Upper Deck, Upper Deck has the best support out of all the card companies, in my opinion. Uh, ovation of Matthews for the Leafs. Like, if you have a box that's missing something, they're really good about it. So. But, yeah. I love I love Panini's design. Um, that's why I like Premier and SPX a lot from Upper Deck. Hellbuck for the Jets. And, like, even this year's Series 1. Like, this, I'm fine with. The one thing that, like, Panini does differently is that they don't have that, like, one headliner set kind of thing like a continuous set like they don't have a series one series two right so i think a lot of people were worried about all the parallels that panini was pumping out but they made a good bet there uh heiskanen on the pros and prospects number two one thousand for the stars that there i mean you look at how prism took off but yeah, national treasures was a beautiful product i love prime I mean, Prime is what led to the Mega Patches in Premier. Because those are beautiful. Nice, Byron for the abs on the uh, Young Guns. E0506. Yeah, I just, I found their design better. Um, their, their value per box was, in terms of like, 
what you get per box felt better at the time. There are some upper deck products that I would argue did, again, did better in that regard too, but on average, it felt very similar. Like I would take limited over SP game use type of thing um, back then, but upper deck did improve it. So, you know, I think there's a good friendly competition there. Handmark for the sharks. Like again, I upper deck makes some really nice stuff. I love artifacts. Um, I love SPX. I, like series one and series two, I love. I love the whole young gun set. Oops. I have way too many young guns to even name. So Seth Jones for the blue jackets. Uh, that's to the really highs. Uh, the two nine nine nine. So like I like that, but yeah. Uh, I'm. I know they kept the. They're keeping the door somewhat open. I mean, they signed Kako and Kratsov, and that didn't work out super well for them right now. But I think, actually, mind you, at the time, I think it still worked out pretty well. Uh, Glenn Godden for the Flames. I think if the door's left open, they'll probably uh make a comeback. I'd love to see them in it. Like, I would absolutely love to see Panini make hockey products and. It's the same thing. I'd love to see Upper Deck make basketball, baseball, football, um, you know. Because I think one of the things that we have right now is that every company is kind of stuck to their sport. Uh, Sharon Govich for the Devils. Which is fine, but, like, you get the same sets year in and year out. And it'd be nice to see them kind of, like, rotate one set in one year, one set in the next. Or, like, combine a couple of the sets together, right? So... Uh, Calfoot for the Lightning. Like, for example, uh, I love the thing I love about SPX is that it combines uh, Upper Deck Black and SPX together because, like, both products on their own, like, yeah, they could make a standalone product for both. Like, they could easily do it, but it just makes sense to combine those two products together there, and it turns out really well. Uh, Cam Johnson for the Blue Jackets. You know, it's both of those sets are really, really nice. And I think they could do that to a couple more sets in a, in a given year type of thing and be really cool. But I Again, I love seeing different products and like different designs and stuff. Well, another SPX Finite. This is a weird box again. Uh, Aho for the Hurricanes. It's not low enough number to be consequential, but it's a 2999. So, I, yeah, I, again, love both products, or, like, both companies, they both have, you know, they both have pros and cons, but, um, I, I'd love to see more, more in the hockey space. Heist can end for the stars. You know, the, the more choice you have, the, the, the better within, within reason, because, like, if there's too many products, it can kind of you know, water down the market, um, make things confusing. So I'd say the one thing about like Panini and Upper Deck both holding licenses at the same time is that they were both limited in how many products that they could make. So like Upper Deck couldn't quite make some of their like more request products, Van Check for the Capitals on the holographics. So like they couldn't make some of the other like cooler products. Like for example, Ice during that time frame was, uh, Ice was a bonus pack in SPX normally, right? Yeah. Because I think 10, 11, 11, 12, and uh, 12, 13, maybe even 13, 14 we were all bonus packs for Ice. Like, they still made it, but it, you had to get other boxes and it was one pack. Corner for the Sharks. Um, so like, and ice is one of my favorite products for hockey because it's different. Just like ingrained is one of my favorite products out there because it's such a unique product that, um, you know, it may not be the most, the most well liked by everyone, but it's a very unique product. There's cards that like you just can't get elsewhere. And I like that. Uh, Delandria for the stars on the 0506 young gun. So back to back breaks here. We're getting a double on the 0506 young guns so i again 
there's always pros and cons. Um, I think Upper Deck, you know, their current suite of products is solid. I miss Contenders Hockey, but when Upper Deck came out with Credentials last year, like, before Credentials was really, like, listed and, like, posted, I wasn't super high on it. But once it, like, came out of what it was going to be, I was stoked. Uh, letting in for the lease. I love the Rookie Ticket Auto Design. And that product was really, really good last year, value-wise. Like, I think Credentials is a better product than SP Authentic. In terms of, like, your contents and your value. I mean, your rookie autos were rarer, too, right? So, that's a hot take, but... Uh, this is a thick pack. McDavid for the Oilers. On the, uh... 15... Or the 20... 21 McDavid, uh, Kachuk for the Flames, I don't know, 506, so that was a two-hit pack there, just a bonus card in the pack, so, long story, like, I think Panini probably keeps the door open if they can, um, they seem to like to get as many, uh, licenses as they can type of thing, so, but I hope if they do come back, it's not exclusive, Kershaw for Chicago, because I'd be very sad without my young guns, without my young guns, without my premiere, I mean, I love the cup too. It's just expensive, but uh, ingrained as well. You know, there's SPX, uh, black, like those are just products that I really, really like. Artifacts as well. So I'd be sad. Uh, Nemesnikov for the Red Wings on the clear cut. You know, so. And again, I'm glad that one thing that I'm glad Upper Deck did this year was make a uh, that they were missing in kind of their portfolio was make an extended series. Um, I think they can improve upon it. Reese Johnson for Chicago, like, uh, you know, improve upon, make it more like how series two kind of was back in, you know, again, the Panini era, right? Had your MVP rookies, your OPG rookies, you get two to three cart, like two to three hits per pack type of thing. Um, that to me was a lot of fun back then. Ooh, Spectrum. This is this might be one of the low, low numbered ones. Yeah, the 99 burns for the Sharks. Uh, I think that's the Spectrum finite. Bill, it is going. Um, first break. I forget who you had in the first break. This break, you got the Red Wings. Um, nothing. I mean, you got a clear cut, but nothing major. Looks finite though to 99. Um, I forget who you had first break, but I will uh, look that up after or something. Um, first break was kind of on the quieter side. Like, it was okay. There's some nice cards. Uh, there's a beautiful Texier RPA from Premier. It's like four color, seven break. Uh, it's kind of like the bottom of the, like, bottom left of the swoosh on their logo. And there is a Domi Mega Patch to 20. Um, everything else in that break was kind of just standard. Nothing special. In this break, though, we've gotten some really cool stuff early on. So we got a Blink Back Rookie of Hackenpaw uh, for the Ducks. Uh, the Yossi to 20 on the uh, Colors and Contours. Oh, and we hit the uh, XRC3 in chronology so that'll be Stutzla but it was randomed off and I think Philly yeah Philly won the random there so here we go series one French variation Natures for the Hurricanes Pashnak for the Bruins but yeah and like I think if they if Upper Deck turned extended into more what Chronicles is I would love that. I think that'd just be such a better product where you start putting in the updates, um, like the update autos throughout the year, stuff like that. True for the Sharks on the Young Guns. Because that was one of the things that we had last break is that our box of Ice and our box of um, Platinum both had update autos in them and like they counted as one of the main hits. And it's just frustrating when you get, you know, a 2019-20 20, 20, box and you get a 2018-19 hit as your only hit in it type of thing, right? So, Kachero for the Lightning on the portraits. That is one of the things I hope Upper Deck kind of like 
improves upon in the future. I get I get both sides of it that you don't want to put too much value in, but at the same time, like it can be frustrating. Seth Jones for the Blue Jackets on the predominant. But yeah, like I think if they were to move, you know, extended sort of into like a later in the year type product um, and put in like all the catch up kind of cards that they need to from players that missed stuff during the year, I think it'd be really good. Verana for the Capitals. Rookie retrospective of Fox for the Rangers. So, and really happy to see extended in the in the product portfolio, though. I hope they stick with it. I mean, I think there's already like a hundred young guns essentially for next year. So, Stamkos for the Lightning. So there's going to be a there's some really tough cuts that they have to make, or b they're going to have to have extended again. And I I hope it's you know the latter option. Because I, I like it as a product design. Delandria for the stars on the young guns. So. I just think, you know, the per box value needs to be not as heavily reliant on the young guns. Try settle for the Oilers. Series 1 and 2. Yeah. I, I like the amount of variations that you could get in them. I didn't like the designs on all of them. Um, you know, I think they could push a little bit more there. So Banjad for the Rangers, like, uh, push a couple new type of designs and experiment a little bit more there. But I do think if they go, you know, you make two or three of those inserts per pack and you start bringing just that, especially in, in hobby format, right? In re I'm not talking about retail. Retail can be like one per. Those are for the Leafs. But like... That way, you know, you're not as reliant on the rookie crop being good in that checklist. You can, you know, you get your value elsewhere. You can slide in Easter eggs elsewhere type of things, right? So, ooh, well, not the right young gun to hit, but clear-cut young gun of Larmy for the Penguins. So that's a case hit. We're hitting lots of rare stuff. Like, this break is definitely hitting the rare stuff. But yeah. Like, I like extended from the from the whole, like, update. There's different inserts to collect. Every pack can kind of feel different. There's some stuff, and again, Pandemic is part of it, but there's some stuff where it fell short for me. Tatar for the Habs on the Worldwide. Um... The biggest issue with it for me was the fact that you could have base packs and hobby. And that's just not the best feeling, especially compared to Series 1 and Series 2, where the better young guns typically will end up. Uh, Joseph for the Penguins on the young guns. Um, but, like, yeah, you know, you make it back, like, 2010, 11, 2011, 12... Uh, series two, where you get two to three cards per pack, and it, or like two to three hits per pack, used for the Devils, and it becomes better. You don't, then you don't need as big of a, as big of a base checklist either. Um, oh, the other part where it really missed this year for me was the OPG and MVP update rookies, because they did not, or the portraits and the, um, the portraits and LPG rookies, because there were no Kaprizovs, um, Hoaglander, stuff like that in those sets. And that's just a little value thing there, right? Uh, Tatar for the Haps. So, but like, again, the product concept is there. I, think, I hope they take all the feedback in and then improve upon it next year. Steal for the Ducks, because it is like, it is a cool product. Like, at the end of the day, you know, being able to have those extra rookies in there is good. Uh, you can squeeze a few more in. And that way, you know, we don't have years where we're missing out on young guns of good players, potentially. Uh, could trail for the Lightning, because you can squeeze in, you know, those few more that might be on the fringe. Or, like, that, that you otherwise wouldn't have been able to fit in. You know, like, you could have had a Chris Tanev, for example, or... 
uh, you know, Max Pacioretty. Ooh, rookie retrospective jersey. Olafson for the Sabres. These are tough to hit, not numbered. Chipping on the back, but tougher to hit there. So, hey, again, we're getting rare to hit cards in this. Belzeal for the Habs on the young guns. Our young guns were weaker, but eh. At the end of the day, clear-cut young gun will make up for that, so. Sam Sonoff for the Capitals. Yeah, I, I just, I love it. I love the concept of update products where you can jam in a bunch of extra value from all the update stuff uh, you can experiment with new designs on cards. You can put stuff that, you know, you can't quite do a full set around. Uh, Domi for the Habs. Um, you can kind of throw all that in there. See what works well. See what doesn't. Adjust it year by year type of thing. You know, just make it a fun product. That's my biggest thing. Simula for the Flyers. You know, I think, I think the update products, as long as they're like, Focused on having fun, that is ideal. So that's extended. This is. Just gonna grab a quick drink of water here. Uh. All right. Uh, last box of kind of the bigger pack stuff and then onto the hit based but yeah i again like i just i like the variety i like when a box you open up a box and the box feel like you kind of know what to expect on a per box and per case basis but there's easter eggs thrown in and like every pack or box feels different like you know, it doesn't feel like you're looking at the same cards over and over again type of thing. You know, and as much as Series 1 and Series 2 can be like that, um, they also, like, there's also just enough variation in them now, especially now, that they don't feel like that anymore. So, I think they've done, Upper Deck's done a really good job of perfecting those sets. Uh, random between the Flames and Senators. Senators is Peter, Flames is Ted. So we have two randoms to do on the canvas checklist. If we somehow hit another Kachuk Kachuk card, like they're on a duel, um, Robertson for the Leafs on the thing, uh, what we'll do is we'll give the better card to the winner, the worst card to the loser. As we normally do with 50 50 randoms, like. Just makes sense. And that is the one card that I could see it happening to with as well. Dry saddle for the Oilers on the award winners. My favorite part about sorting this break is that like I get into the series two inserts and it's like, why is there OPG here? Skinner for the Oilers. Uh, for like half a second, just like this is out of place. How to get here? Then it's like, wait, it's from series two. But I like the fact that, again, Series 2 has, it just has the extra value with, you know, the update rookies and rookie portraits. Used to Manko for the Flyers. And, like, their cards that, their cards that won't break the bank, right? Like, they're not going to be, you know, $20, $30 cards. But a dollar here, a dollar here, per dollar there per pack, even 50 cents, 50 there, 50 cents there is good. Uh, Lincoln in for Chicago on the young guns new small for the centers and Cooper league for chicago canvas and dazzlers respectively i love the dazzlers set this year i like that uh next year they've got a different one that i really really like in series one Well, that's a good one. Capri's off for the wild on the young guns. First time in a while that we pulled him. Will he sign in the NHL? I think so, but 
we will see. It's funny, because that Yossi card is just beautiful. Like, it doesn't look out of place on a stand in the middle. The hack and paw kind of does, but it's a blank back, and I have a soft spot for those, so it will stay up there. Uh, Pink Dazzlers of Krebs for Vegas. Yeah. I want, I'm want. i excited to see what Allure looks like this year. I think... You know, if Upper Deck goes less die cutty on it and more parallels, it'll be really, really nice. Yellison for the Flames. So, it is a product that I didn't like, but then the more I open it, the more I liked it. Again, same thing, lots of value in it, lots of different, like, cool parallels and stuff. So, uh, Kershev for Chicago on the rookie portraits. No French variation yet, which bodes well for maybe getting a French young gun. Sega Doolin for the Flames. We got a young gun canvas coming up. It's gonna say three boxes and not get, well, two boxes, I guess. Uh, and whistle for Chicago. Is not getting any. That's the other, I guess the other weird part of Extended was that, you know, some of the better players have young guns. And the other, the final part that kind of bugged me, uh, Marchment for the Panthers, was that there were a lot of headshot photos. I wish they, you know, would have used, or would have waited for game photos for a couple more, but I get it type of thing. So it's kind of one of those, it's a tough situation, tough year. Rents for the Hurricanes on the rookie materials. I'd love to pull the Byfield rookie materials. Because it exists. It's super rare. But it exists. Uh, Prisky for the Panthers. On the young guns. This might be our French variation. Nope. Laurent for the Hurricanes on the rookie portraits. Uh, Dumba for the wild. Oh, we got a weird pack. Base cards are backwards. Oh, we got a real weird pack. Uh, Perron for the blues and Yulevi for the Canucks on the Dazzlers and Canvas. Because we've already had a Dazzlers Canvas pack. Alright, we're in weird box time. Leonard for the Sharks. No French variations in there. Maybe we won't get a French variation. Uh, Matthew Street variation for the Leafs. That's a solid one to get. Card feels a little thicker than the usual card, but uh, based on the rest. How many young guns are we at? Feels like we've gotten a lot of young guns in this box. Where do we start? Uh, one, two, three, four, five. We've got all six and a canvas, so we shouldn't have another young gun left. Unless we hit a French. But it is a weird box, so who knows? Uh, Angelo for the Penguins. You know what? We were missing one in... Uh, we had a double French variation, but missing a young gun the last uh, two boxes ago that we opened up. And it was the same kind of back and forth base like this. So that would make some sense. Uh, Angelo for the Penguins. And base on the rest. And last pack. Base, 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 base. Free Duke for Vegas. And no French, so I'll double check, but I don't think we pulled a single French variation, so, and that lines up again with the last box. Mm. 
None of those are French. None of those are French. Yeah, I just don't think we got one. I think we just got an extra young gun instead of a French variation. Which, I mean, hey, we'll take that. I'd take that trade off any day of the week, to be honest. Yep, no French variation, so... I mean, we got a bonus young gun, which I would argue, if you were to ask at the start of the box, would you rather have a French variation or an extra young gun? I'm pretty sure every single person here is saying an extra young gun. So, you know, no harm, no foul type of thing. All right, artifacts time. Let's, uh, who are we calling for the rookie redemption here? I know we went with San Jose, but got Ottawa. So I was a couple, couple teams off there last break uh this break we're gonna go with what's a good rookie redemption i feel like we're gonna get the canucks in this one i feel like the canucks for some reason we got two randoms to do still so here we go Orange of Burns to 75 for the Sharks. Rookie coming up, uh, of course, call for the Leafs. This one looks decently centered. Uh, it's not horrible. It's still slightly miscut, but they, they all are, so. McDavid for the Oilers to a little bit of soft corner, but to 299 on the Copper Stars. And last card in the parallel side. Uh, Carlson for Chicago. Uh, same thing, definitely miscut, but not horrible. All right, uh, we haven't pulled a patch in a while. We've kind of been going through autofax boxes, which are my least favorite. So let's get something spicy. A lot spicy. Uh, Josh Norris on the rookie jersey autograph to 99 for the Senators. Good one. Uh, one of the top ones that you could probably get that's live. All right, Hack and Paw. You can kind of uh, slide out. We can put the Norris up there. I'm glad to see artifacts has kind of bounced up a little bit too in value lately. So just in terms of secondary market, cause it's never really well liked, but I think people are starting to change their opinions on it. All right, rookie redemption time. I said Vancouver, it is Toronto. I was off by a team. Uh, who's that? Who is that again? It's not Robertson cause Robertson's live. It may be wool. No, it's Bear Banoff. Bear Banoff. Well, I'll take the Norris Jersey Auto over the Canucks Redemption, I think, at least. Got a Remnant Jersey here. Huberto for the Panthers. And last pack. Come on, patch. Not a patch. It's a jersey card. But we got jersey auto, so I'm happy there. Another rookie. Velarde? Yeah, Velarde for the Kings to $5.99 with the nice sparkly silver jerseys. Not a bad box of artifacts. Not, not the best, not the worst, but 
And at the start, if you pull a Leafs Redemption, you're kind of laughing. Especially if they have potential for a big rookie to come up. But the Norris is nice. I remember our first like break with artifacts where it was just like the Josh Norris break essentially. Those are typically the two hits. Add to the Styrofoam Mountain. And here we go. Let's see. Let's see a level three rookie. That'd be nice. Oh, we got a hit here. Uh, Bodan for Chicago. Uh, Lawrence for the Hurricanes, two nine ninety nine, and Sveshnikov for the Hurricanes. It's got like a hair or something on there. On the jersey. I think Upper Deck improved the value in Trilogy this year too. Uh, laugh for the Rangers on the Super Sage. It's got some soft corners. And Kratz Soft for the Rangers. This one also has a soft corner there. Uh, just on the side there. You can kind of see it in the foil. But to $7.99 on the renditions. So double Rangers pack. Base, base, Belzeal for the Habs, and nice, Stutzla level one for the uh, Senators to 999, number 896 of 999. Good little Stutzla there. Not want to open nicely. Uh, McMichael for the Capitals on the renditions. Uh, Korshkov for the Leafs to 9.99 on the Super Stage, and just a base on the back. Move that to the front. So we already hit one hit. So typically this would be a two hit. Our two hits would be here, but uh, we've got Kout for the Avs on the renditions, and Hagel for Chicago on the jersey to 4.99. And we got a thick card. Will be a patch or a puck? I'm guessing puck. I mean, I kind of already saw the edge, so it's probably a puck at this point. Uh, Johansson for the Sabres. And nice, number to 21. Uh, signature pucks, uh, the team logo of Dylan Strom for Chicago, numbered 11 of 21. Not bad. Strom to 21. Not again, not the biggest name player, but cool card number to 21. Take it. SP game use time. I feel like we're gonna have a good box of SPX. Definitely don't have a net card, I can tell you that much. All right, what, where are we going here? Uh, I mean, honestly, I don't know. I guess we'll end there. Not, yeah. Coat for the Avs on the rookie jersey. Banner year of Yossi for the Predators. Uh, Atkinson for 265 for the Blue Jackets. Okay, that's actually better. Uh, Stutzla on the authentic rookies to 199. That makes up for the box. Uh, Reduke for Vegas on the auto. Romanov for the Habs on the rookie jersey. So that Stutzla kind of carrying a lot. But not the not the strongest box of Spagoo. It's weird because you'll get boxes of SP game use that are like 
really, really strong. And you'll get boxes that are like really weak. And it's fine. Like it, the home run hits are just amazing in it, but it's just amazing. That product has like the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. Which is, again, it's why it's a decent group break product too, because it kind of helps, you know, especially when you have Series 1, Series 2, and other products in there, it helps mitigate the overall risk for it. So. There we go. Alright, let's just go. This is normally like a rookie jersey auto, but we'll see. A uh, tune off for the Sharks to 375 on the rookie jersey auto. Again, I love that design this year. Shea Theodore on the base to 299 for Vegas. Uh, it's just a plain shadow box, yeah. Velarde for the Kings on the rookie shadow box, not numbered. And last pack. Got two randoms to do here. Romanov for the Habs to 99 on the rookie jersey. So, oh, not bad. I mean, Kaprizov Young Guns, Norris to 99, blank back of Hawk and Paw, the Yossi to 20, clear cut Young Gun, Stutes Little 199, the Stutes Little Premiers, the Strom to 21. It's not bad. Not the worst, but we got the two randoms to do here. So we do. Flames and uh, Senators uh, on the checklist. Three times whoever's on top gets it. Same with the uh, Young Guns one. So I'll just get those set up here quickly. But uh, again, I'll make sure that uh, there weren't any shutouts. If there were, I'll throw in like uh, just a bonus pack or something like that. Like uh, whether it's a Hockey Card Day in Canada pack or something like that. So uh, yeah, anyways, uh, let's get these randoms set up. Ottawa, Ottawa, and... Man, thank you all for coming out. Fun day of breaks. I think there's still some spots left for football tomorrow. Uh, if you are interested in it. There we go. So, here we go. Three times. On top gets it. Once. Twice. Can Calgary ride it all the way? They do to the finish. The Flames get the checklist. And once twice third time the charm florida all right so there we have it uh again solid break some nice stuff some rare stuff some cool stuff uh, a little bit of everything yeah solid uh thank you all for coming out i'll see you tomorrow for football and take care